time. What time are they coming back today? About 5 or 5.15. 5 or 5.15. Does that answer your question, Dale? All right. <laughs> Um, this morning, we have just a few announcements to share, and it's going to be even fewer because there's mine. Oh, well. <clears throat> I would call your attention just this week on Thursday night, the church council will meet. Please send any and all reports, if you can, to Libby ahead of time so that we can send them out to people, and that way we'll be able to make the most efficient and best use of our time. Other meetings are listed there for you to put on your calendar and schedule. We're going to have a very busy but very blessed month. Also, and I'm going to leave you to go through a lot of this yourselves. In worship today, we will use a different Gloria Patri. We're going to be using number 2276. So if you want to mark that, it's in the faith we sing. 2276 today. Darkness to light trainings will be starting soon. There are two of those. You can go to either or. You do not have to go to both. One of them will be on February 25th, immediately after, after the wonderful Wednesday meal. The other will be at, on March the 1st at 2 p.m. So if either of those would fit your calendar, that is great. If not, we'll be doing it again soon after that. Um, other announcements to be shared this morning? Scarlet. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Woo, there you go. All righty. Um, it's walk time again. Uh, the Water Missions Walk is going to be March 21st. And I believe this year they're going to be starting at Brittle Bank Park instead of the usual Cannon Park. But I haven't been able to confirm that yet, so I will let y'all know. However, I just want to let everybody know, if you are interested in walking, today is the last day for their early bird discount. Uh, registration is usually $20 a person, and uh, you can get $10 off of the registration. If you just go to the Water Missions site, which is www.watermissions.org, walk. <laughs> and the early bird discount code is early bird, all in caps. So, um, but it does expire today, and I apologize for not getting this in the bulletin, but I just got this from them yesterday by email. So, I'm hoping some of you who've walked before have gotten that same email that I did. But anyway, we are still having a team, and our team name is H2O Amazing, like it was last year. And, um, we hope to see you out there. It's a lot of fun, and it's for a good cause. Thank you. Other announcements this morning. Don't forget to fill out the papers in the attendance records, and Annette's going to have a word. Oh, good morning. You, sh <laughs> you should have gotten one of these handouts as you walked in this morning, and you may have seen some signs around the building, but it's time to do a new church directory. Uh, it has been five years, and we try to do one every five years, and this one is especially important because this is going to be our 60th anniversary year, so I have offered to help Barbara Shaw try to coordinate this. So the um, date for the pictures is Friday, March the 13th, and Saturday, March the 14th. Um, the sitting is free. Um, you... Um, get your picture in the directory, you uh, get a free copy of the directory, and you also get one free 8 by 10 portrait of your sitting. Now, there is an opportunity to buy additional photographs, and you know they will go over all that with you, but don't let that deter you from getting the picture. You're not obligated to buy any. We want you to get photographed. We want to have that pictorial history of St. Mark at this point in time. Uh, if you do decide you are going to want to buy some, you can earn a $5 credit towards that purchase by bringing a canned good with you to the sitting, and that canned good actually goes into our food bank here at St. Mark's. Uh, you can also earn a $10 credit just by giving me your email address when I sign you up. So, um, quick note, they did get my phone number wrong when they put it on here. That should be 7690439. Um, and also, it was wrong in the um, St. Marker that came out, but uh, I'll 
try and get an email blast out to you about that. But I will be back in the Northex, and for the next three Sundays, it'll either be myself or someone else will be here in person to sign you up, or you can call me and leave a message or email me, and I can get you signed up that way too. So thank you. We got to hurry up and worship because I'll be remembering more stuff. Like I was just handed this note to let you know that here at St. Mark, we will be doing a performance of the Book of Matthew live using excerpts from Godspell. You will want to go ahead and put on your calendar that that will be March the 28th at 7 p.m. or March 29th at 2 p.m. And so you'll want to put that and we'll send this information out to you and have it in the bulletin. Also, last week we filled out the living as a steward, and we should <clears throat> have a more complete picture of all the different ways that we live as a steward. But if you did not get a chance to indicate how you might like to be uh, participate in our worship, most of this is worship time, things like Children's Chapel, 9 a.m. Acolyte, Scripture Reader, Assist with Communion, share your testimony, and that is very, very important. We'd love for you, if there are those of you that would like to take a few minutes to share your testimony of what, it is, what living as a person of Christ means to you, um, please let us know. And if you don't want to stand up here, I mean, we can always film it and put it on, on this big television thing. But um, just if you would, there are additional copies of this available in the Narthex and get this back to us, please. I can't think of anything else that I'm not looking at you, so if you're waving at me, I don't see you. <laughs> no, seriously, are there other announcements? Uh, we'll get to that. There's a red bird moment. So, okay, anything else? Have I got it? Let's worship. Let us pray. O oh, holy God, let there be nothing that comes between you and us. Where there is any distress or worry, pour out your peace. And where there is doubt or confusion, pour out your wisdom. But come into our lives and inspire us, we pray. Amen. We begin worship today celebrating one of the great missions of the United Methodist Church. Frank will share with us about Redbird. Thank you, Scarlett. Um, this morning we're going to talk a little bit about Redburn Mission uh, and what we're doing in the district this year. Uh, I know most of you, my name's Frank Morley, 
Uh, I've kind of headed up our Redbird mission for St. Mark for the last two years. And as you know, when Scarlett asked, for a, asked you for something, you can't say no. So now I'm heading up the domestic missions for Charleston District uh, for the Methodist Church. Uh, this is an outreach program for our entire district. So I guess I moved to the next level, I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, Charleston uh, District, uh, like we mentioned, has selected the Bluebird Mission of Beverly, Kentucky as our 2015 focus mission experience. And uh, what we've done is sent a flyer, we've sent a uh, video that you're going to see, and uh, some materials to help each church in the district support the Redbird Mission. Now, we're offering any church, any individual, in the district to come join us. Uh, if the church, churches don't have anyone that wants to participate, we're uh, asking any monetary support to help the entire group and their prayers uh, as we go through this endeavor. Um, the um, project that we kind of started this year and it was taken off of uh, Scarlett's dad's church where they have a rattle can and in their church, every Sunday they pass a can down the aisle, people throw their change in it, and that goes into an extra account to help with missions and activities of their church. They have a pretty sizable budget in their rattle cans. But uh, we, th we took that off on that, so this February, each of your pews have a can sitting in the corner, and during the, uh, before we do the uh, announcements, when Rich would normally be up here, we're asking folks to pass the can. If you have any change, dollar bills or whatever you have, pass it to the end of the pew. And as soon as Rich gets finished the announcements, we're going to shake the cans. And whatever side howls the loudest noise wins that Sunday. So we'll have a little competition going. Um, part of the... Uh, Redbird uh, activities that we have uh, basically is the individuals going and supporting the program. And when we do that, uh, we're doing the next step or one of the things in stewardship that we've been talking about the last month of giving of ourselves and our talents. In, in the case of Redbird, anything from using a pair of scissors to a hammer or nail gun, uh, using a paintbrush, trawling on uh, cement, or doing any type of work is all part of the experience. So there's no skill limits uh, to any activities that we have there at, at Redbird Mission. Um, the normal process and fees for an individual going is $375, so we go pay to work. Uh, out of that uh, $375, 53% of it is our room and board, and we have good meals, and we have nice air-conditioned rooms. 47% uh, of it goes for the materials. So when we go and do a mission trip, we're actually paying for everything for that individual when we go fix their home up. So. Last year, we had a home that we were asked to make a bathroom handicap accessible, and we were asked to paint a home. We did that, and about 15 other things along the way. So we always carry a little reserve monies with us to be able to go in and do some more nicer things for the family and improve their life and living conditions. And. Uh, Last year it was kind of amazing because when we got into the project, we get pictures ahead of time and I sit down and I try to blow them up and analyze, okay, well, we could use some curtains here or we could do this or we could do that. But when Harold and our group got in uh, and Bernie to put in a accessible toilet, we found out she didn't have any lights in the bathroom. She didn't have a sink that was functional. Uh, none of the switches worked, and she had just had both knees replaced 
and was trying to get to the bathroom with a flashlight. So we, those things weren't on the list other than the toilet that we put in a new vanity, new sink top, new faucets, put a light in, light switch. All of that was extra that we did that was beyond what we were expected to do in the program. So that and many other little things that we did to make her life a little bit nicer. So part of the, uh, like I said, the activities we're going to do is a rattle can for the month of February. And uh, this has gone out to the whole district. So hopefully that will help us in getting the fees for our transportation. Typically that's our biggest cost, the gas and the cars to go. And that little extra money to help out on the mission projects. Um, we're going to watch a little short video. It's about a five minute video on Redbird to kind of give you an idea of the area, the activities that people get involved in at the Redbird mission and some of their activities. This is Appalachia, our nation's first frontier. It's a beautiful country of mist-covered mountains, dense forests, and narrow valleys. We're in southeastern Kentucky, a stone's throw from Tennessee and Virginia. There's history here. Daniel Boone himself blazed the trail, not far away, that established the route through the Cumberland Gap and into our continent's interior. Like so many places, this area has seen its ups and downs. It's never been an easy place to live. The area's real economic base, coal mining, peaked about 60 years ago and has been fading ever since. Good jobs are scarce, and with limited incomes, residents are forced to make hard choices regarding things like food, housing, and education. In an area that's economically weak, the local tax base is also depressed. So just as residents struggle to meet their own needs, local and county governments struggle to be able to assist. The counties of southeastern Kentucky are among the nation's poorest. But difficult as life may be, the people love their land and families stay close. As early as a century ago, residents were starting to see the need for more schools and better medical care for the isolated mountain people. What began as weekly outdoor teaching sessions in 1913 grew into a Christian school and by 1921 Redbird Mission was formally organized. Shortly thereafter, a doctor and nurse arrived and to this day, education and medical assistance remain at the core of the Redbird Mission, which now also includes construction, housing, food, clothing, and sustainable economic programming. The mission has grown to occupy a large campus. Maintaining this campus and staffing the community work projects takes a lot of people, and so the Redbird Work Camp was born. Volunteers from around the country come to Redbird. They stay for a week or more and help with all areas of mission operation. Work campers will find a focused but comfortably informal atmosphere. Dormitory cabins are plain but clean and air conditioned. You'll be invited to make yourself at home, to enjoy the outdoor game areas, the bonfire circle, and also to help yourself to the leftovers in the fridge. Your mornings will begin with a short devotion and then you're off to your work site after a hearty breakfast. Some groups work on projects on the mission grounds. This can include new building construction, old building destruction, and general maintenance. And they're always happy for help in the kitchen and at the community store too. There are off-site projects as well. Building wheelchair ramps, fixing roofs, drywall, plumbing, and painting for people who have no other way of getting this work done. It's rewarding for Redbird work campers to go out into the surrounding community to meet people in their homes and to make a difference in the quality of their lives. Special skills are not required at Redbird. Many campers work in areas where they have little or no expertise and tackle building projects for the very first time in their lives. If you're willing to learn and take a little direction, you can help make big progress on projects during your camping week. 
here's what Redbird Mission does for its little corner of the world. There's the K-12 Redbird School, Early Childhood Development Program, GED programs, transitional housing, medical clinic, dental clinic, prescription assistance, senior center, health and resource fair. They're a site for the Grow Appalachia Agriculture Project, work camp, and on-site home improvement projects, the community store, back-to-school assistance, the craft store, and certainly not least, the mission itself is a big employer in the area. Is a trip to Redbird worth it? We could have just raised some money and sent it to Redbird and stayed home ourselves, not burned the gasoline to get there and not exposed ourselves to the risk of travel. Wouldn't that have been a more efficient use of our resources? But then we wouldn't have learned anything new and that too is a part of the Redbird mission, giving us, the missioners, an understanding of the extent to which our lives are blessed. Sometimes you have to leave home to understand both what you have and what you have to offer. A trip to Redbird Mission gives us the experience of living out Christ's command to love our neighbor, while helping us to recognize who that neighbor is. That leaves us with an experience of Christian compassion and increased understanding. And that is the Redbird Mission. This year, uh, we're going to be attending Redbird on uh, May the 17th to the 23rd, and we're going to have an organizational meeting of all the churches in the district here at St. Mark on February the 9th. So if anybody's interested and want to come check it out some more, talk about it, see what we're going to do, you're more than welcome to join us uh, at 7 o'clock on February the 9th. Thank you all very much.
Let us then with one heart and one voice affirm that which we believe, believe with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen, and would you please be seated. The children now may leave to go to Children's Chapel. I know they're gathering up some of the prayer requests. And then there's children's chapel with Miss Gail and the family. Thank you, Miss Gail. Thank you, Miss Gail. Thank you, Miss Gail. And now Lisa is coming to share with us from 1 Corinthians. Would you join with me in reading the prayer of illumination as printed in the bulletin? Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with transforming joy what you say to us today. Amen. And today's scripture is 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1 through 13. And I've chosen to read it out of the kids' deep blue Bible that Emma got last year. I thought it was neat. Now concerning meat that has been sacrificed to a false god, we know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge makes people arrogant, but love builds people up. If anyone thinks they know something, they don't yet know as much as they should know. But if someone loves God, then they are known by God. So concerning the actual food involved in these sacrifices to false gods, we know that a false god isn't anything in this world, and that there is no god except for the one god. Granted, there are so-called gods in heaven and on earth, as there are many gods and many lords. However, for us believers, there is one God the Father. All things come from him, and we belong to him. And there is one Lord Jesus Christ. All things exist through him, and we live through him. But not everybody knows this. Some are eating this food as though it really is food sacrificed to a real idol, because they were used to idol they were used to idol worship until now. Their conscience is weak because it has been damaged. Food won't bring us closer to God. We are not missing out if we don't eat, and we don't have any advantage if we do eat. But watch out, or else this freedom of yours might be a problem for those who are weak. Suppose someone sees you, the person who has knowledge, eating in an idol's temple. Won't the person with the weak conscience be encouraged to eat the meat sacrificed to false gods? The weak brother or sister for whom Christ died is destroyed by your knowledge. You sin against Christ if you sin against your brothers and sisters and hurt their weak consciences this way. This is why, if food causes the downfall of my brother or sister, I won't eat meat ever again 
or else I may cause my brother or sister to fall. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you. Um, Paul is not getting all excited about being a vegetarian. That's not what this is about. We need to make that clear from the beginning. What he is talking about is taking care of each other, about being spiritual mentors for one another. In a couple of weeks, we will have an infant baptism here. And Chris and Andrea Dolan will bring little Callie up here and she, we'll take her and she will be right here in front of you and we'll ask a whole bunch of questions and we'll answer and as the, all this is happening, a little baby Bible is going to go around the room and you'll sign it so that the child knows you're here and we'll ask such questions on behalf of the entire church, I will say, I must ask you and I'll ask things like, do you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior? Do you intend to teach this child about Jesus? I'll ask, do you intend to raise this child in such a way that she will become a disciple of Christ for herself? And as a part of all of those questions, church, you will respond. And in a baptism, whenever you and I are allowed to participate, and I use that word intentionally, baptism's not something that I do or you do or anybody else on earth does. Baptism is the work of God. We just are blessed to participate in what God is doing. And our participation includes our commitment to this person. So this beautiful little child will be here, and she'll have her mom and her dad and her big sister, and she'll be here, and, and, and the water will flow, and she'll be baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. But church, you will have made her promises. You will have promised, I hope, to pray for her to teach her, to model Christian life for her. You will have promised, in effect, not to be a stumbling block. That being said, think of all the little ones that have been baptized and the grown-up ones. Think of all the people you know that are growing in faith. And then ask yourself, would you intentionally destroy their faith? That's Paul's question. Would you intentionally destroy their faith? You see, Paul has received this letter. And even though we don't have a copy of it, we know it exists because in his response, this first letter to the Corinthians, he goes and he talks about this and then he says, now about that, now about this, now about that. He's responding to the questions they've asked. And one of those is about food sacrificed to idols. So you start this whole chapter. Now concerning food sacrificed to idols. Okay, that's what he's going to talk about. And in this chapter, he'll give us the short answer, but if you keep reading for the next couple of chapters, he continues along this thought process. Paul does not think a little bit and move on. Paul is a very deep and long thinker. And so that's what he does. But what he's going to come to is the idea and the understanding that in our Christian living, we have to balance our rights with love. And when there's a question about what is right and lawful versus what is loving and kind, loving and kind should win out. That's what Paul's talking about here. So he's, they, they write him and they say, now about this food that's, that's for idols. Well, okay, 
The practice in Corinth was that all these other little idols and small g gods and all, that they had to, people were believers in those sort of things would sacrifice. You'd ha they'd haul their goat or their cow or their whatever, and, and they they ritualistically sacrifice it and drain the blood out and all that kind of stuff and, and fire it up. And, and anyway, then they're left with this big hunk of meat. Well, what you going to do? So what they would do is take this big piece of meat, chop it up, and anybody and everybody that wanted to eat it could come, and it was free or almost free. And that was a dandy thing. It was just like a free meal. So even people who were believers in Jesus Christ would go because it's a free meal, and they know that a whole lot of thing doesn't mean anything. It's meat. Eat it. Because they didn't have a whole lot of meat in their diets. Meat is and was expensive. But people who were new to the faith would see Christians sitting there at the barbecue and they would think, oh, well, maybe Christian, maybe it's not just Jesus. Maybe, maybe it's more. And they'd get confused in their faith and they would think that you worship all this stuff. And, and Paul says, you know what? If me sitting down to eat that would call somebody else to turn from God, or to worship something that's not God, I won't do it. That's what Paul's saying. He's balancing what's right and okay and lawful with what is loving and kind. And loving and kind is winning out. That's what he's doing. Now you and I may look at this and say, well, that doesn't apply to me. Doesn't apply. You know, I'm not going to be anywhere where they're going to kill a you know, to some other God. I'm not going to be there. But you know, people still have this debate. I ran across this past week a conversational thread on the Internet out of the United Kingdom where some folks were debating whether or not they could eat in certain restaurants, ethnic restaurants, because the, they were, there were little sacrifices to, say, Buddha or some Hindu god or something like that. It's a real question, and it's not just meat. And it applies to your life. You see, we all have the right to do a lot of different things, but sometimes when people see us doing those, people who are young in faith, they get confused. And we need to let mercy and love and kindness went out above what's right. Now sometimes that does mean giving up or changing our behaviors because neither you nor I would want to intentionally do something that would cause one of these young ones in faith to go away from God. We don't want to do that. So let us look in our lives and see what stumbling blocks we need to get rid of. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Jesus Christ does invite us to his table. He invites us to come to his table to, to partake of the feast that has been prepared. And as a part of that, we need to consider who we are and how we live in harmony and how we encourage others in their faith. Christ our Lord does invite to his table all those who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the needy. 
Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us continue then to pray. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. And so, as a forgiven people of God, I would ask that you turn and greet your neighbor in his holy name. Don't go far, but turn and greet your neighbor. long enough. Let us then continue with peace and joy in our hearts to worship the Lord our God with the giving of his tithes and our offerings.
Amen, and let us be seated. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right, and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and of earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread. He gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Christ Jesus, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forevermore. Amen. And so before our beloved God, we lift in perfect trust Gil Bourne, the Glasgow family, Paul Ohm, Wesley Bryant, Hannah, Stephen, Julia and Addie, their medical teams and families, David Holt, Harriet Collins, the family of Marion Smith, our college students, Nora Lipka, Lisa Lockwood, Steve and Kitty Duncan, the Cooter family, the Power family, Steve Duncan and family, the Power family, the Cooter family, Pat Spell, Pam Westbury, Philip Westbury, Kimberly Dyke, Hannah, Chris, and Nancy Ward, Linda Curry, Norma Oliver, Georgia Odom, the Lee family, Janice Alexander, David Alexander, Michelle Alexander, Linda Curry, Valerie Sutton and her mother, Beverly Johnson, families in need, Linda Curry, Beverly Poston, Beth Locklear, Hannah, War Hannah and family, Timmy Linker, Zachary, Cody, Samantha, and George, Dr. Robert Clifford and family, Tim and Nancy Strickland and family, Claire Kirby and family, Pat Connor, Norma Oliver, Bill Harris, the Warren family, Sharon Twells, Pat and Rex Connor, Blake Connor, Amy Swain and her family upon the death of her uncle, and our youth that they may get home safely from revolution, and so many others. But we praise God. We praise God for every opportunity that we have taken to be church to one another 
and to the world. And so let us pray now with the confidence of the children of God. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Let us then receive that which has been prepared for us. There is one Lord who gave of himself for all of us. One Savior who poured out his blood for the forgiveness of sins. Let us then receive and taste the glory of God. I would ask those who are assisting to come forward at this time. would invite the choir to come first.
God of the Son. And he calls us to be a church, to love one another, and to pray for 